Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about overvalued currencies, okay? We talk about overvalued currencies, we're talking about a country that is pegging their currency to another currency. Usually countries peg, that countries that do peg their currencies, peg them either to the dollar or to the euro, okay? Now, in this video we're mainly going to be talking about what is an overvalued currency and what a country can do about an overvalued currency. But what we're not going to be talking about is what is a peg or why countries peg. Look for other videos from us that are going to be telling you what exactly is a peg and why do countries peg their currencies to other currencies. But for this particular video, we're focused on what is it to be an overvalued currency and what do countries do when they have an overvalued currency. Okay, so in this graph, I'm trying to represent a currency that is overvalued. The example I'm using in this graph is the Jordan dinar, okay? Jordan pegs their currency, the dinar, to the US dollar. Now I wanna be very clear, this is not doing any current event at all. We're just picking a currency out there that is in fact um, pegged to the US dollar to use as our example. Now, when you look at this graph, here's the, de here's the deal. Jordan, or Jordan's central bank, you might even say, has basically said, here is my exchange rate range that I am guaranteeing, that I am promising, that I will convert dinar for dollars and dollars for dinar, dinar at, okay? This range right here. Which brings me to one important point right off the bat, is when we hear of a peg, a peg is actually not a specific amount usually, it's a very narrow range. And I'm kind of representing that narrow range, okay? So if we can get this supply and demand to be intersecting anywhere in this range, Jordan would be perfectly fine with that, okay? So this is their guaranteed exchange rate. This is what they will exchange the dinar for dollars and dollars for dinar at. The issue is, as you can see from the graph, is that's not what the market forces are saying the exchange rate should be. Supply and demand based on market forces are intersecting here. This is our exchange rate market, okay? Now here's one thing right off the bat where kids can get confused. Some kids will look at this graph and see an intersection point below the range and say, oh, it's undervalued. No, 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 it is overvalued. What we mean by it being overvalued is we're saying Jordan is overvaluing their currency. They're valuing their currency above what the market says the value should be. Remember, what is this currency actually gonna get exchanged at, okay? Not this one, this is what the market's saying it should be, but it's not gonna get exchanged at that rate. It's gonna be exchanged really at the lower end of this range, okay, right there. So this is what's gonna be the, that's basically the official exchange rate, that's what it's gonna be exchanged at, hence they have overvalued their currency. Now, what can Jordan do about that if this is the situation? Well, the number one thing that they can do is use their official reserve assets. Official reserve assets are a few currencies out there that countries use to settle international payments, okay? The big two are the US dollar and the euro. And I'm gonna focus on the dollar because again, Jordan is pegging the dinar to the dollar. So they're definitely gonna hold dollars as their reserve asset. So again, it's called official reserve asset. What is it? It's a currency. What currency? Well, the two big ones are US dollars and the euro. And in this one, we're talking about the US dollar. Now, before I talk about exactly how they're going to use that dollar, I'm going to talk about what's really going on here. Okay. And this is going to be kind of involved. So really pay attention because this is a little bit difficult. Okay. Here's what's going on is that that official exchange rate, we're intersecting the demand curve right there at that dot, right? The demand curve at that dot. And so this is the quantity, let me just do this. This is the quantity demanded for the dinar. Now, what does that represent? Well, one way to call that is to say that represents credit, okay, for uh, Jordan. That is basically people outside of Jordan who want the dinar. This is the quantity demand of dinar. So they want to come, they want the dinar. Why? To either buy Jordan goods and services or maybe to do tourism in, jo in Jordan or in to invest in Jordan. This is the number of dinar that are demanded. People outside of dinar basically wanting to come into dinar either to buy their goods and services, do tourism, or uh, invest there, okay? But at that peg, this is the quantity supply. 
All right, so these are people from Jordan who want to go buy imports from abroad, right? Other people's goods and services or invest abroad, just to be a little bit simplistic. These are people who want to go out. These are people that have the dinar, right? They're supplying the dinar and they want to go out. They represent debit uh, from a balance of payment sense, uh, uh, standpoint, okay? So they want to head out. So here's what's going to happen, okay? The central bank in Jordan, well, if they have the reserves and they feel they have adequate amount of reserves, are going to do this. They're going to basically take these dollars here. They're going to supply the dollars. And we know if you supply the dollar, you are demanding the NAR, right? I mean, just like if you go to any um, currency exchange, right? Hey, here's my dollars. They're going to give you the NAR. It is, you know, we know when you supply dollars, you're demanding the dinar, right? So they're going to supply these dollars. They're going to draw down their reserves. They're going to shift this demand curve to the right. But here's another way to think about it, which is the same thing. They're basically going to say, hey, here, there's this excess of supply of dinars. There's not enough dollars. There's this much supply of dinars. There's only this much demand for dinars, which means there's a surplus of dinar, there's a shortage of dollars, right? A shortage of dollars by that much. And what the central bank's doing is they're taking those dollars and they're handing it to the people in Jordan who want to go abroad. Oh, thank you for those dollars. They're handing them those dollars so they can go abroad, all right? So that action of handing them those dollars the Fed, what they're doing is they're taking the dinar away from those people, right? Here's my dinar. I want to go buy an import from abroad. Oh, here's my dinar, Central Bank. Central Bank hands dollar. Oh, good. I go buy import, right? So they're increasing this quantity demanded to the quantity supplied, shifting the demand curve to the right. I'm not actually going to shift it, but shifting that demand curve to the right, drawing down their dollars. And I know that's a little bit complicated what I said. I said it in a couple different ways to really understand what's going on. That's what they're doing. They're clearing the market. All right. But how about if they don't have enough dollars, they can't print dollars, right? They're not the U S fed, right? They're not the U S central bank. They only have so many dollars. Well, the next thing they can do is they can try to borrow from borrow dollars either from the u.s government or from the imf okay so they could borrow dollars that'd be the next thing to do and if they went and borrowed dollars they do the same thing again with those dollars they would demand the dinar shift it out again they would borrow dollars to hand it to that excess number of people that have dinar that want to go out handing those dollars to those people so they can go buy those imports. And those people are going to hand that dinar to them. That handing the dinar to the central bank, that is the increase in demand for the, uh, for the dinar. Again, the central bank is increasing their demand for the dinar by supplying the market with dollars. I hope that makes sense. I know it's confusing. What's the next thing they can do? How about if they don't want to go into foreign debt because that puts them into foreign debt? Well, now really get into this supply and demand aspects, okay? Well, what could they do? They could raise interest rates, right? Because if you raise interest rates, we know that when you increase the interest rate, what's going to happen is, oh, some of these people, these suppliers of dinar, remember they're the ones of dinar, want to go maybe invest in abroad. Ooh, my interest rate's higher here in Jordan than it used to be. I might keep my money in Jordan, reducing the supply of dinar, right? On top of that, some foreign investors might go, oh, there's a higher interest rate in Jordan. So they're going to come and demand the dinar. So when that interest rate goes up, that should pull back the supply and increase the demand, putting them intersecting in that range. There we go. Now there's some problems with that, right? That's contractionary monetary policy and that contractionary monetary policy can hurt the Jordan's economy. So we got to keep that in mind. But that would be something else they can do. What's the next thing they can do? They could do import controls, right? So what do you mean? Well, we, they could do tariffs and quotas, right? If they do tariffs and quotas, we're gonna buy less imports, right? I'm Some people out there in Jordan wanna head out, right? To go buy that stuff from abroad. They've got their dinar, wanna go buy those goods. Oh, what can Jordan do? They can make those goods more expensive for them by putting tariffs on them. Oh, that's more expensive. I'm not gonna buy as many. That would decrease the supply of dinar. But again, by putting tariffs or quotas, just literally limiting the amount of goods that can come in. But let's focus on quotas, I mean, on tariffs. It's kind of the easier thing, right? Raising the price of those imports. Okay, we're not gonna buy one, one as many. We're not gonna supply as many of our dinar, right? People from Jordan aren't gonna supply as many. So those um, uh, import controls, which really just think of tariffs, right? 
pulls back that supply curve. So that would be another thing that we could do. Finally, we can put capital controls in. What's a capital control? We could say, hey, we're, only, we're not going to allow capital flight. We're not going to allow like a lot of investors to pull their money out of Jordan and take their money out of Jordan or even uh, our own citizens. We're only going to let them invest so much abroad. Okay, You can only invest, say, um, 2000 or 10,000 USD abroad, no more than that, right? So again, if we say, hey, there's a capital control, what we mean by that is we're only gonna allow so much financial capital to go abroad. We're gonna say, no, 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 you can only invest so much financial capital abroad. That is going to reduce the supply of dinar. So that'd be the next move that we could do. So let's recap, use those dollars. Use those dollars. That's number one. Use your official reserve assets. Well, that's why they're there to fix this problem. Number two, borrow from abroad. Go get more dollars. If you don't have enough dollars, get more dollars and use those dollars to fix this issue. Or, which remember, put you in foreign debt though. Or we can raise interest rates, which would decrease supply, increase demand, but that's contractionary monetary policy. It's going to hurt your economy. Or we can do some tariffs, right? Some import controls, pulling this back, which could lead to, say, um, some trade wars. Or we can do capital controls also pulling the supply back. But then again, we're limiting the investment options of our citizens, so that could be problematic too. What's the final thing we could do if we didn't want to do any of those things? We could devalue our currency. We could just move that range down. Now, I say just do it. It may, makes it sound really simple. I do want you to understand, this is a promise by the Jordan Central Bank. And if they devalue, they're going back on a promise. They promise to exchange dinar for dollars at somewhere in this range. If they devalue and i.e. move the range down, meaning do nothing about supply and demand, move their own range down, that's what a devaluing is. They're going back on a promise. And there's bad things with doing that. People might not believe their promises as much going forward. Anyhow, talked about overvalued currencies. I think it was kind of a complicated video. Might want to watch it twice. Hopefully it made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.